Welcome. Why are all these caffeine drinks so sour? Okay. The plain form. What is the plain form? Well, the plain form is simply a way to conjugate a verb. So if you have the verb hada to do or kada to go, well, how can you conjugate these verbs? Well, you can conjugate them a plethora of ways. You can say kada is kayo, kamnida, kayo as a question, anything like that. Those are all conjugating. Plain form is just one more way that you can conjugate a verb. And by itself, the plain form is just that. It is not by itself a speech level. It can be used in politeness levels, but by itself, it's simply a conjugation. And the reason that it's called plain form is because it is very plain. By that I mean the plain form in itself is not rude, it's not polite, it's not formal, it's not informal, it is plain. This can become polite or rude or formal or informal depending on its usage. I'm gonna be talking about how to use the plain form in detail in this lesson, but before we do that, let's just talk about how it's made. First, let's start with the present tense. The way you conjugate it depends on whether you're using an action verb, so a verb that's doing something, or if you're using a descriptive verb, so a verb that's just being used to describe something. For an action verb, you take the stem, and then if that stem ends with a consonant, you attach nun. If not, if it ends with a vowel, you attach just this letter, nian. And then you attach ta, poda, to see. We get the stem. The stem ends with a vowel. We attach this, ponda. Bita is to believe. We get the stem. It ends with a consonant. We attach this. Minnanda. There is one exception for action verb stems that end with this consonant. You simply remove it first. So the verb sairda, to live. Get the stem. It ends with that letter. You remove it. You attach this because it now ends with a vowel. And you get sanda. Descriptive verbs are the easiest thing to conjugate in the entire world. If you have a descriptive verb, you take the verb stem and you attach ta. When you have a descriptive verb, it is already plain form as well. So, take the descriptive verb chota to be good. Let me conjugate it. Whew. And now we're done. Let me do one more example though. Borda, to be far. This one's a little tricky. Let me conjugate this. Morda. Oh, I know. Ita to exist. Give me a second. Ita. So this one's kind of significant. If you're making the progressive tense, like I am doing something, ka go isoyo, I'm going, ha go isoyo, I'm doing it, ho go isoyo, I'm looking. That means the plain form of everything in the progressive tense is just ko ita, and you're done. So for past tense plain form, you take the conjugated verb. By that I mean you conjugate the verb in the past tense as you normally would. And you know that it's conjugated in the past tense because you'll have this. Chuahada means to like. So how would you conjugate this normally in the past tense? So hada would become hesoyo, right? Once you get here, these two letters, that's your stem. So you get the past tense conjugated verb stem and then you attach pa and you're done. So Chuahada to like, past tense, chuaheta. You're done. There's one more thing though you should know. The verb ida, to be, in the past tense, how do we make it? It's yosoyo after a consonant, but after a vowel, it's just yosoyo. That means you're gonna have two different plain forms depending on whether you're using ida after a consonant or after a vowel. So now to make the plain form, you'll notice it's going to be either iota or yota. Now let's go on to future tense. You might be familiar with the keta ending for making future tense, like kada, kagesoyo, or kagesunida, hagesunida, chaimokesunida, like that. So this is the base form. So what you do is first you get this base form just like before, and then you add a period to the end because you're done. For example, poda, to see, pogeta, the end. There is another way to make the future tense, which is also really common, and that is you take a verb stem and you attach if the verb stem ends with a consonant or a lir, 
if the verb stem ends with a vowel or if the verb stem ends with this letter as well. And then you attach kot, meaning thing, and then ida, to be. Hada, you get the stem. It ends with a vowel. Hai, koshida. This is normally what you would do to start making the regular future tense. So now you have this, you're done. There's one more step though we can do. Kot can and is often shortened to just ko. So if you use kot, you're going to attach ida. But if you use ko, you're not going to attach ida because ida, as you've seen, the e gets removed whenever it's used after a vowel. In this case, ko ends with a vowel, so you're not going to attach ida. You're just going to attach ta, and you're done. Nine times out of ten, you're going to use koda. Hai koda, kai koda. This form, though, does have conjugation exceptions in it, but they're the same as you would use when you're making the form regularly. For example, if you're using a verb stem that ends with a piup, you remove the piup and attach u, just like usual. But this is it for conjugating. It's the same as that. Okay. Now we know how to make the plain form, but we don't really know how to use it very well. The first thing you need to know about using the plain form is that no matter what you're saying, no matter who you're talking to, no matter if you're writing it or screaming it, you do not use tall with the plain form. So instead of tall, you use na. So do not use tall. If you say tall nin katta, it is wrong. Has to be na. The next thing that you need to know is that plain form is commonly used in several grammar forms. So just because someone uses the plain form doesn't necessarily mean that they're using the plain form, if that makes sense. Anytime you see something that's plain form with ko, it's going to be part of a form. For example, 좋다고 생각해요. So I think it is good. 저는 좋다고 생각해요. I just use plain form, 좋다, but the sentence is not in plain form. It's just being used as part of this grammar form. If the sentence ends with plain form, that's when it probably is going to be actually using plain form. Another thing you should know, plain form, when I say plain form and when teachers online say plain form, what we're actually referring to is only one kind of plain form. We're only referring to plain form when you're making statements. These are not questions, will you do? These are not commands, do it. These are not suggestions, shall we do it? These are all statements. So when we say plain form, we're only talking about this. Plain form uses that we're learning about today are all for statements. The plain form is commonly used in both speech and writing whenever the audience, so whenever the listener is unknown, so this form is not going to be commonly used when you know who you are directing it to. So this will be different whether you're using it in writing or in speaking. So first let's talk about usages of the plain form in writing. Some common places that you're going to see it used are the following. Advertisements. So if you are looking at an advertisement on the subway. Essays including your test essays. So if you take a test in Korean and you want to say, I did this, I like to eat cheese, monkeys are my favorite animal, all of these sentences should be in plain form. The next thing is newspaper articles. Look at the verb endings. They're going to be plain form. Another place you're going to see plain form is example sentences. So this is going to be in a textbook. If you wanted to write an example sentence, that's not really supposed to be a dialogue example, but just an example like Charsu went to the moon. It's not supposed to be an example of someone saying something. It's just an example sentence. These are all going to be written in plain form because they're plain. They don't have to be directed at anyone. It's just this is the sentence, no context, the end. Charsu went to the moon. Another place you're going to see plain form is in your own journal entries. So if you're writing a diary, you should be writing those in the plain form. For speech, though, it's a bit different. For speech, this form is going to be used when you're using panmar. So if you use this in speech, this is considered to be panmar if you direct it at anyone. So then what does it sound like? Using it to someone sounds like you're making an announcement. By that I mean, this is like you're holding a megaphone and you're saying something out loud. So when you say plain form out loud, it is considered panmar. And the feeling that you get is like you're holding a megaphone, like a microphone and then making an announcement. It's like you're saying something out loud to get other people's attention. So if you're walking around outside and you say to your friend, I am going, nakanda. Nakanda, but it sounds like, hey, I'm going. It sounds like you're making an announcement to them. 
Like, listen to me. Give me your attention. Okay, all right. All right, I'm leaving. It has that feeling to it. Mongdenda, all right, I'm eating. Nakanda, I'm leaving. It sounds like an announcement. So you're not going to use it for regular speech because you don't need to make announcements with your regular speech. The next way that you will use plain form in speech is not for panmar, talking out loud to yourself. So this is not directed at anyone in particular. You're not going to look someone in the eye and then say something that you're thinking out loud to yourself. That would be considered panmar. For example, you're walking outside and it's really cold. To be cold, like you feel cold, is chukta. So how would you say, ah, oh, it's cold? Would you say, oh, chuoyo? No, because if you said chuoyo, it's like, why are you being polite to nobody? Chupsumnida. I am so very cold, but I want to be respective. I want to be formal when I say this. No, you say, ah, chukta. Ah, chuo. Ah, chukta, chuo. It's cold. Again, you're announcing it. No one has to hear you. But this is what you would use to yourself. Plain form, just saying something out loud. You're talking to yourself. Again, not directed at anyone in particular. You're not making eye contact with someone. You could even walk by someone who you would normally speak very politely to. Of course, you would never speak casual to them, but you're walking by, you're talking to yourself. Perfectly fine, because you're not directing it at that person. When you're talking to yourself, you actually have several options for what you can use. You can use casual speech when you're talking to yourself, but you also have a few other options. You can use the plain form for any sort of statement. But if you want to use questions, how can you make questions to yourself? This is not the plain form, but I'll give you a few other forms. You can use G for questions to yourself. If you want to have a soft question, what could that be? You can also use the regular na or ka endings. If you're trying to remember something, you can also use the tora ending. Wodora? What was that? I can't remember. Again, these are not directed at other people. If they are, these would all be casual speech. But you can use these when talking to yourself. There's one more usage in speech. When you say something in the plain form with a rising intonation at the end, so the same as you would do when you're asking a question, it has a different meaning. Here are just three random examples. What if you said handa or itta or katta? If you use plain form, which is only for statements, I said, but you use it with a question intonation, adding a question mark grabs the listener's attention. When you use a question intonation after plain form, it sounds like this. Hey, listen to me. So I did something. So there is something. So I went somewhere. So you're saying, hey, so, and I'm getting your attention. Again, it's like using a megaphone. Charsu went to the party yesterday, okay? And then you continue with what you want to talk about. So this again is casual because you're using it directed at someone. You're talking with someone when you're using it, but it gets their attention. So it's a good way to start telling a story is by using the plain form with a question intonation. So let me give you some sentences. 오늘 철수를 만났다. So 만났다, past tense of 만나다, to meet. So I met Charsu today. 오늘 철수를 만났다. Now, if you were to say this with a question intonation, it sounds like the start of a story you're going to tell a friend. Hey, so I met Charsu today. So they know when they're listening, oh, something happened. There's something to tell me. 나는 I, 김치를, 김치, 좋아하지 않는다. Do not like. Notice 않는다 because to like is an action verb. 나는 김치를 좋아하지 않는다. I do not like kimchi. Although I do like kimchi, in the example sentence, I do not like it. 이 가방, this bag, 이 가방이 안 무겁다. 무겁다 is to be heavy. 안 무겁다, not heavy. This bag's not heavy. 이 가방이 안 무겁다. 철수는 한국인이다. Or 한국 사람이다. 철수 is a Korean. 철수는 한국 사람이다. 철수는 한국에 산다. 철수는 한국에 산다. 철수 한국에 산다. Lives 살다. Lives in Korea. 이미 already 다 all 먹었다. So I ate it all already. Or more naturally, I already finished eating it. 이미 다 먹었다. 괜찮을 것이다. You could have also said 거다. 괜찮을 거다. It will be okay. You could say 한국어는 or 한국어가 쉽다. Korean, as in the Korean language, 한국어, 쉽다 is easy. 쉽다, 한국어가 쉽다. Or you could have said 한글이 쉽다. 한글, the alphabet. 한글이 쉽다. 
So the Korean alphabet is easy. Okay, that is our lesson for today. Thank you everyone for joining me and I will see you again next time. 그럼 다음에 또 봐.